people ask me and talk to me about, well, you talk and you act like Jesus is real or that God is real. And, you know, I have a Bible and I read it, but how do I know that God is real? No, but seriously, the way that you know is like anything else when you were growing up. How did you know that Santa Claus wasn't real? How did you know that the Tooth Fairy wasn't true? How did you know that you were born from your mother and your father? Well, someone told you. Now, how I know that Jesus is real is because he proved himself in such a way that he came into my life in such an overwhelming, emotional, ridiculous experience that nothing has ever come close to being that. And so, on one level, when I first got saved, you could say, well, you just had an overwhelming gestalt of orgasmic experience that somehow your brain was overloaded by the input of all the emotional factors and the little neurons were firing off in such a way that you didn't even know that you were really deceived and that that wasn't God. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. But you see, beyond experience of feelings, I also have conversation with God where I talk to God and I prove that he talks to me. But, but, but wait a minute, you mean God speaks audibly to you? Well, yeah, but he didn't start that way. You see, God can use the word that he's written to explain to you about God so you begin to understand who he is, what he is, how he speaks, what he says, and the way he says it. So that way, if you begin to kind of get to know God a little better than what you just think God is, in some theoretical way, then he can start to sh slowly show you that he's moving in your life in the circumstances of your life. But, but wait a minute now, let's get this right. So you're saying God is a God of circumstance. No. <laughs> and yes, I'm saying God uses the circumstances of your life to prove he exists in your life and that he works through your life and he involves you with your life. So that way you can come to a closer, more intimate understanding of your life and of him because it's a spiritual thing that you can't see. You have to connect the dots. You have to go in order. You have to take the steps to get to know him in a way where he can fill you with himself. But wait a minute, fill him with yourself, that sounds like some kind of possession thing. So no, 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 don't go there yet. Okay, so God works in your circumstances, so prove it. Wait a minute, you're telling me to prove God? Yeah, prove it. See if he's real or if he's not. If he's not real, hey, go do something else. But if you prove him, as he says, and you see that he is, then you're going to have to do something about him, because then God is intervening in your life, because he is the living God, and he may want something from you, or he may give something to you that requires you to do something on your part. So, you're telling me that God... God wants to involve me in his life? Yeah, he created you. Oh, well, I thought I was just born to my mother and father. No. You see, anybody can procreate and cause flesh to be made. They simply put all the cells together, you know, and they wind up having this multiplicity of cells that grows and becomes a being. But how does it become alive? What's that extra ingredient that makes it a living soul? According to Genesis, God breathes into that person and they become a living soul. 
do you think maybe that if God does that, he might be involved in the birthing process? That there's not just a man and a woman involved in procreation, but that there's a man, a woman, and God involved in the birthing process of a person who was created in the image of God. Something to think about. So when I say that God is real and God is alive, and that God will speak to you, I'm not kidding. God does. God will. And God chooses to be a part of your life in a very real, a very provable, a very demonstrative, a very scientific methodology that you can use and apply to your own life to see if God is real. But you got to keep going, because if you stop anywhere along the way, guess what? He's waiting for you to catch up. And you just got to keep going and find out that God is not only real, but he wants you intimately involved with him. And that's what Jesus said. So it's up to you. In God Calling, give every moment. My children, how dear to my heart is the cry of love that asks for all of me, that which is every action, every thought, every word, and every moment to be mine. How poor the understanding of the one who thinks that money to be used in this good work or that is the great gift offered to me. It's not about money. Above all, I desire love, true, warm, childlike love, the trusting, understanding love that comes from an open and real heart to me. And that is the gift I prize, that is the gift of the moments of every moment of your life, of sharing those moments together. I think even when love's impetuous longing to serve me has offered me all life, every day, every hour, I think even then it is a long and not an easy lesson to learn what it means to give me the moments. Do you know me moment by moment? Do you want to? The little things you plan to do, given up gladly at my suggestion, the little services joyfully rendered, see me in all of those and then it will be an easy task to have me in every moment of your life recognize my hints, my products. This is a priceless time of initiation, but remember that the path of initiation is not for all. Not everyone wants me or wants to see me and know me as intimately as I will reveal myself to you. But only for those who have felt the sorrow cry of the world that needs a savior and the tender plea of a savior who needs followers through whom he can accomplish his great work of salvation joyfully. You see, there's a purpose and a design with why God wants to live in you completely in the moment-by-moment -moment activities of your life. Because it's not about you. <laughs> but it is all about Him. And when it's all about Him, what His will is, is to save souls from hell. His choices and His direction when He came here on earth was to reveal the Father, to provide salvation, but to cause us to go from selfishness to selflessness to reach out and touch the people who are desperately in need of hope, of eternity, of something beyond what they could see, what they could touch, and what they could feel, and the realization that they can prove that not only does God exist, but that God cares for them.